Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. It is your girl, Miss Honey, here with a video for Power. Season 1's finale. <laughs> Finally! Episode 10, Heart of Darkness. Honestly, this season finale was like a triathlon. If you guys know anything about triathlons, you got to, I don't know, run 75 miles, swim 75 miles, <laughs> and bike 75 miles, right? I just felt like we were in this triathlon. It was... Everything happened so quickly and so fast within like this really short span of time. And actually with power, it would behoove you to throw time and space out of the picture um, when watching, when reviewing, when listening to reviews, just throw time and space out. But the writers are the ones that keep bringing up the issue of time. They keep denoting time. And for me, it marks it for me as well. But we committed um, in this uh, season that we were not going to pick at the scabs. So those of you who follow me know that the scabs are these little things that just don't make no sense. <laughs> but... Picking at them is not going to help the situation at all. If anything, it's just going to make it worse for you. So we've committed not to pick at scabs, although we are going to note the scabs. We might not pick, but we will be noting. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Thank you guys so much. Everybody who's watched this entire season, all of the comments, you guys, all of my new subscribers that I have gained from... Um, this show, this leg of the show, uh, I thank you guys so much. If you are new to my channel and you have not subscribed, please feel free to do so. Please feel free to comment uh, down below. I try to talk with everyone down in the comments down below, so you will definitely get an answer, <laughs> some dialogue, some conversation about your um, questions or your observations, your perception of this this season. I'd love to hear it um, down below. Um, but without further ado, you guys, let us get into this review. Like I said, I typically go by characters, even if I group the characters like the moms and the professors. But we're going to go scene by scene because... Like I said, it was like a, a jambalaya, a gumbo. That's what it was. It was like a gumbo uh, of scenes and writings. And I was like, oh, I need a nap. Anyway, let's talk about it. Power Book 2 Ghost Season 1 Episode 10 Heart of Darkness. We see from the start that Monet and her wig um, goes to see Rico in order to snuff him. Now, we're going to find out later that Lorenzo had nothing to do with Monet snuffing Rico. Um, not really sure why the Rico character kind of turned me on a little bit. Y'all know I love a good beard. Y'all know I like an urban look. But it was something about him I liked. I don't know. I think Miss Honey has a type. Anyway, we also see that Monet now has a bodyguard of some sort. This is the owl character. I thought that the owl character was like, I don't know, like the leader of another uh, set, a uh, gang. When I say set, I mean S-E-C-T sect gang. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know where I got it from, but apparently owl is like, her heavy we thought that that was just Kane uh you guys know I mentioned in the last episode why does Monet not have more of a team around her especially if her husband was like this pen this king pen and he's Puerto Rican like y'all know Puerto Ricans run deep like Latins 
run real deep anyway. Like they always stack three or four deep. You very rarely ever see uh, Latins by themselves. They just don't roll by themselves. So why she don't have more help than what she has beyond her three children, I don't know. But apparently she's got Owl on her team. So we get to see Owl now for what is the first and the last time. But I digress. We also get to see Kane disposing of Ramirez's body in a swamp. Um, Ramirez's phone is ringing because um, Monet is looking for him. And, and she is calling back to back because she kind of wanted him to handle the Rico situation, right? And at the same time that she's handling the situation, Kane is burying Ramirez's body or, or got him... I don't know why he didn't just chop him up and put him in the drums. Maybe he didn't do that because in the oil drums, maybe he didn't do that because that's what his family does to get rid of the bodies. And he didn't want his family to know, but like, who's going to go through all of the drums <laughs> and pull out all the bodies out of this? Out of, like, okay, but we in the swamp and uh, the phone rings. He cuts through the plastic gets the phone sees that it is mom it's his mom calling or texting or whatever so then he takes the sim card out throws it one way breaks the phone up throws it in a different direction we see him take um i thought it was his gun but the way he was looking at it obviously it was ramirez's gun i thought he was gonna put it with the body he puts it back into his in, into on his person and then we see where he takes Ramirez's badge out of, out of his own pocket, Kane's own pocket, takes the dad burn badge out and looks at the badge and puts the badge back. I was like, dude, if you get caught with this badge, you, you, I mean, it's worse than getting caught with the gun. It really is. It's worse than, than leaving the phone all together and intact. Like getting caught with this badge is the last thing he would want to do, but he puts it back. That's fine. Okay. I, something tells me it's going to come back to, to bite you in the butt, Kane. Um, then we see where Diana comes by basically, uh, where Al and, and, uh, and Monet are, you know, loading up these bodies from Rico and, um, she picks him, her up. She's going to take her down to the hospital cause Drew could be waking up at any moment. And they discuss why they may or may not be able to get a hold to Ramirez. What is going on with that? I was just like, okay. And then we see where, um, Tariq is back running around that camp, but y'all know that first and second scene, <laughs> first and second episode of this season, all we saw Tariq doing was running like chick -chick 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 with that backpack on, chick -chick 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 except this time he got a suit on. He running off the class and there's Lauren, you know, she teaches pets. She putting a note on the door because the um, class has been canceled for the day because they are still interviewing students. I was like, oh, okay. I thought it was only like three students on campus because <laughs> the way they tried to wrap up everything last week with the interviews and the students and the police, I was just like, <sighs> but apparently it's going to continue. And, uh, but it's still only two professors on this entire campus that's interviewing students. Only two. <laughs> so, um, she tells him camp st st the, 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 the class has been canceled to Ricky. You look so nice. Where are you going? He was like, today's my mom's court day and I'm going to her court case. I have to testify in my mom's defense. And she was like, oh, okay. Like, she knows she can't talk too much about the mama because she already kind of burned her bridge a little bit with Tyreek in this whole mama situation. So, um, at the same time, he's seeing Everett go into one of the um, interview spaces that, that Jabari and uh, Milgram are interviewing. And we see where, right after that scene, Everett interviews with Milgram and Jabari and basically he spills the beans. He, he just tells it was like, yeah, these guys rolled up. They were going to kill Zeke. They were going to shoot Zeke 
and this Drew guy, you know, I didn't, I don't really know him. Like we're not really close. Like he's still trying to disassociate himself from Drew because, you know, Drew is openly gay and he's still in, in the closet. Um, so he just tries to play it like Drew is this random guy, but basically he is spilling the tea. Like he's telling what really went down. If Zeke was a real boss, he would have told all his boys to hold, keep all that in. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't be talking to nobody about the situation, but we get to see where Zeke is not really that type of guy. But Milgram in the process of all of this, as Everett is sort of spilling the beans, Milgram basically is like, And, you know, she kind of leads him. You were just so drunk. How many drinks did you have? And he was like, oh, six or seven. She was like, six or seven drinks. Can we really trust anything you have to say on this matter? I mean, really? And he is like, what? Now, I'm pretty sure she was like, and he was like, um, you know what? I was kind of drunk. I was kind of drunk. Yeah. Um, now that you mention it, yeah. Um, no, I didn't see nothing. And that's basically it. I was just like, Milgram. <sighs> uh, it's, yeah, okay. So, y'all know Milgram was threatened by Monet. So, she has to really take lead of these these interviews and she really can't have anything circle back to Zeke or to her or to the Tejada family in any way. So this is one of the reasons why she is um, sort of leading Everett in his, in his answers. So then we see where um, Zeke meets up with Milgram and there's this moment where like he's just not being cool like he just does not know how to play it cool at all so he sees her in the hallway and Jabari is there I mean basically I thought Zeke was just goofy but I realized in this episode he's scary and goofy like uh, he's, he's, he's such a weak link and just sidebar. We know this isn't a real character, but, um, if you run across this type of man in your adult life where he has been reared so poorly that he is so malleable and so weak and so jelly back. Okay. Run, run because how, you know, this type of type of individual in, in the, in the, um, in, in, in the machine just does not work. It, I mean, in real life, like a dude that's this weak and this jelly bag is a recipe for failure and or disaster. And Milgram is really like his masturbatory action. She's like, uh, uh, thumb sucking for him <clears throat> or illo pulling or hair twirling. She calms him. She satiates him. She puts him in this, this place where, you know, he's not un unraveling at a hundred miles per hour. So she's like his masturbatory <laughs> action act. Literally and figuratively, because after she calms him down and tells him she thinks she's got Jabari um, under her thumb and he doesn't suspect anything and she's gotten rid of this whole Everett um, thing, uh, he wants to go tell Monet and she's like, no, no, everything's fine. You don't want to get her involved. Like you don't want to upset the situation with her. So, um, and then she kisses him and, and, and loves up on him and sucks his face and all of this. And, and it, it just calms him down at the same time. We can see on the other side of her, um, of her wall, we see where Jabari has heard everything, the whole conversation, the whole exchange. And so, he knows that Tariq is not sleeping with 
Milgram that in fact it is Zeke that is sleeping with Milgram at this point and somehow in Jabari's mind he thinks that this makes it okay between him and Tariq like as I don't so we see where um Drew is in the hospital and he's recovering and Kane shows up smelling like swamp sin and Drew basically solidifies what it solidifies Kane's growing sense of isolation from his family and because of Kane's big mouth Drew now knows about Ramirez now mind you he knows about Ramirez. He immediately tells Diana because Drew and Diana are in alliance. You know what I'm saying? They're kind of, you know, the calm ones or the not so nutsy ones of the siblings. So they have gravitated towards each other. Well, we see where um, we're in court. Tyreek is there. And uh, he's being called by Stax, mind you. Basically, everyone's there. Tamika's there. Ott is there. Obviously, Riley. I'm not sure why Riley is there. Like, are you testifying? What? What's the point in her being in that courtroom? It just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, are you there to show moral support, but you're not sitting on your uncle's side? Like... Did you even care anything about court or court proceedings? Like, have we ever seen her in court for anything other than her own case? Like, why? I just, okay. I mean, is she there with pink hair? It's not even like you're trying to be discreet, Riley. you there with pink hair. Okay, so whatever. And obviously, Tosh is there. Uh, Davis, obviously. Stax, obviously. Well, Tariq basically turns the table on um, Stax. And I'm like, finally, somebody gives it to Stax. But um, basically, he just uncovers the fact that... Now, he never mentions Riley's name, but he starts to question Stax. Now... Sax is asking him the questions and he reminds him that he's asking him the questions and he reminds the judge to remind Tariq that he's asking the questions. But Tariq is like, ah, 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 I'm going to say what I got to say. Why were you following me? You, you basically had someone, you put someone inside my, at my school to drug me. The night that they drug me, I went to my father's graveside and... And talked in this drugged stupor, which you recorded. How did you know where I was going to be? How did you follow me? How did you know where I was? And 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 he's asking Stax all of these questions that doesn't necessarily bode well for Stax. And um, again, he didn't bring up Riley's name, but neither did Stax, right? But we know this is how he got all this information. And the judge at first is like, no, no, stick to the questions you're asking. And then after a while, she's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> How many people are involved here? And then Davis, you know, is like, oh, they might bring my name up. So he stands up. He's like, judge, can we talk in chambers? She was like, oh, yeah, we finna talk in chambers. So she goes back into chambers with just Stax and Davis and they start to run and she's like oh no 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 uh Davis is like I want to do a mistrial she's like no 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 there we're gonna talk about a lot of stuff but a mistrial ain't one of them and she's got a court reporter there and the court reporter is taking everything that's going on in the judge chambers down so all of a sudden as the judge gets going good here comes Ott. Ott sends the court reporter out. Then Ott sends the judge out. And the judge is like, ah. And the Ott is like, da, da, da. you want to continue working? You're going to get out of here. And the judge leaves. I was like, well, Ott, if you had this kind of control all along, why was you ever depending on stacks? Like, I just didn't get it. I didn't get it. I don't understand why y'all need to be doing all of this stuff. If you got this much Svengali control, like, what is we doing? Whatever. 
Tamika's in tow. And Art decides that, you know, he's going to take charge of this whole situation. And basically what he's offered to do is, um, let Tasha go. If Tasha will testify against Tommy, basically they trying to clear James's name, James's record. And, and the fact that he was chosen to run on this campaign, like does no one obviously remembers James St. Patrick. No one knows who he is or his children are, <laughs> you know, no one knows any of these things. So I just don't get what the point and what we're doing here, but okay. And, um, he's basically going to put Todd in with sick. She's got to, she's got to, um, basically testify against Tommy and his whole organization and Stax must resign. Davis is free to go. Tariq is free to go. And Tasha, in a sense, is free to go. Now, Tasha doesn't want to testify against Tommy because one, her and Tommy were good friends. And two, she know Tommy will kill her. <laughs> Plus, he kind of owe you anyway for Keisha. But so uh, then we see where uh, Tasha agrees to basically snitch on Tommy. But secretly, her plans are to run, to take Tariq and Yaz and her mama and run. And um, so she gets out of jail literally the same day. Comes out of jail same day as court, and she's got on this little red dress she went in there on, and a, uh, this beautiful black wig. I was like, okay, girl, and and an overnight bag. She's being walked out, and Davis is there giving her a statement. He's invited all of the press. It's for him. It's not for her. He doesn't care anything about her, and uh, or her family. And, um, uh, he's given her this statement to say, and we see off to the side is Tariq and her mom and yes, the youngest baby who looks like she's 12 now. I was like, I don't know. Okay. So instead of her reading the statement he had given her, she said her own statement. She was glad to be out and she's just glad to be with her family. And that was basically it. And, um, yeah, so Tasha's out of jail, basically. We see where Zeke is, is, um, oh, first, um, Riley shows up to the campus right after court and she talks to Brayden. And basically she's just there to put salt on Tariq's name, um, to Brayden, to, make Brayden suspicious of Tariq. And it was such a telling moment because, I mean, it just came across real Karen-esque. It's, it's so weird and unnecessary. We see where Zeke scared like a, I mean, he is, he is, he is scared. The character is scared, right? But then the actor is playing the character scared. Like, I don't know what we going to do. What is we going to do? I don't even know. I don't know what we going to do, boss. I'm scared. I'm so scared. I, I'm, I'm so scared, scared. I was like, what is going on with this character? Like, He goes to see Tyreek and tells him about um, the club situation, which Tyreek didn't even know. The GTG situation um, after the club, which Tyreek didn't even know. And he just tells him he needs to be real, real uh, leery of Monique and not getting involved with, I mean, of Monet and not getting involved with Monet. He was like, I hope you didn't, I hope you ain't get involved with Monet. I was like. And Tariq was like, I don't know anything about that situation. <laughs> I was just like, oh, and, and Drew, uh, um, he don't, uh, at the same time, Zeke don't know about Drew being in the hospital, being shot. Like, I don't know. 
anyway, he he warns Tyreek against all of it. And um, then we see where Tariq meets up with Diana. And Diana sort of fills in the blanks. She fills in the parts that Tariq um, couldn't get from Zeke. Because he couldn't ask Zeke too many questions. Because Zeke is a weak link. And um, he also learns inadvertently about Ramirez being gone. And everybody knows that it was Kane that made Ramirez go ghost. And he pledges his support to Diana um, in, in, in the midst of all of this, right? Like she's going to be the intel in the Tejada family. He's got to kind of keep her close, right? So... We see where um, Tariq meets up with Brayden and they kind of talk a little bit about the Riley situation and Tariq doesn't go too hard on her. Uh, I think he wants to make Brayden feel a little bit better about the fact that he let a whole entire snitch live with them, even though they supposed to be like the drug kingpins as stands feel. But I digress. And pause for a second. In this scene, we get to see where Tyreek is, is a new day and Tyreek is in a different outfit. You know, he doesn't have a suit on. But I don't know if it was the outfit, which was hot. It was a real nice outfit. I was like, I like it. But also, Tyreek seemed taller or older. I don't know if it was the outfit that he was pulled together so trendy or is it that the character itself has grown up? Have we not ever really seen like a full size Tariq? I don't know. But Tariq just seems so much more mature and older in this scene. Was it just me? Y'all put it down below. Okay. They also talk about the drug game. And Tariq was like, oh, we need to kind of lay low a little bit. We don't need to be doing too much right now because the block is hot, right? And Brayden was like, yeah, that's true, but we definitely need to get back on this game. I finally found something I'm really, really good at, and I feel like I'm going to do really, really well in this situation, and I want to make sure that we run this show so we can get back. And, you know, Tariq was like, you know, let me think about it. I need we see where Tariq goes over to meet with Jabari. Jabari has um, summoned Tariq to, to come to his office. And basically, Jabari just tells Tariq everything that he knows. Uh, he knows that he's in with the Tejada family. He knows that he's, you know, selling drugs there. And he lets him know that he basically followed him. And that's how he knows about this Drew character and the fight and all of this. But because Jabari realizes that... Tariq is not the one sleeping with Milgram. He essentially mistakenly thinks that Tariq is not his competition anymore. He went from being jealous of Tariq to now he's saying, okay, to himself, okay, this guy's just, you know, this weak little link running around campus and I'm just, I'm going to put the squeeze on him. I mean, it's black male. There's really no other way to look at it. He um, propositions Tariq to help him write his book. And he tells him, oh, I can give you money for it. Part of my advance, I will share that with you um, if you help me write your story. And Tariq is like, well, can I say no? And he doesn't say, no, you can't say no. It's not an option. But he says, listen, this is in your best interest. And I'm going to keep the police off your back. I'm going to protect you in a way. Like it's a win-win for both of us. At the same time, right on time, in walks the police detective that's investigating the whole GTG pool death situation. So, um, Tariq sees the guy. He sees Tariq. Uh, Jabari introduces the two of them. Tariq was like, nice to meet you. Yada, yada, yada. And the guy's like, yeah, pleasant to meet you too. And Tariq is like, I gotta go. Tariq walks right out past this guy. I was like, okay, so he don't recognize Tariq? <laughs> okay, fine, fine. So I'm sure Tariq is reeling at this point because it's like, good gosh, how many people know my business? 
uh, yeah. So we can see where, um, Tyreek basically is in, is in a rock and a hard place, especially with this whole Jabari situation. Like it's just another thing added to his plate, right? So then we see where Tasha is out of jail now walking around and she chooses to go see Monet. Basically, she wants to buy Tariq out of the drug game. She wants to give Monet money to buy Tariq out of the drug game. I'm like, where'd you get money? Because Tariq called you and asked you for money and you was like, there's no more money. So where you getting money to buy Tariq out of the drug game? You want to give her money to make up for his short coming in the last drop and you want to get her money to buy him out like where you get this money at sis okay scabs not gonna pick at it and um you know she she you know tries to appeal to monet's maternal side um when shots rang out like once again the bar is shot up. Now, Owl, who is the official bodyguard now for all of one episode, comes in the door. And he's he's pretty much dead. He stumbles in the door and dies. And Monet is shooting back, but Tasha runs to the window to see who it is that's driving off. And she sees Tommy's car. So we know that Tommy is back. Which I got a little excited about when I saw Tommy's car. Because I was like, oh, I miss the old power. Anyway, um, Tasha goes immediately down to Tariq's school and tells him Tommy is back. She, he, he knows that I'm going to testify. and Or he thinks that I'm going to testify. We have to get out of town. Tariq doesn't want to go. Even though he was packing up his things anyway. He doesn't really want to go. He feels like running with his mom is going to solve anything. And honestly, Tariq enjoys doing what he's doing. Like he enjoys moving like he's moving. And she is trying to force him once again to be this little boy. And Tariq just puts his foot down. It's like, mom, I'm not going with you. I'm not doing it. And she really, you know, Tommy's a killer. She, he was like, so am I. I'm a killer too. And it jars her to this position where she realizes he's not her little boy no more. Like you can't just tell him what to do and he gonna jump too. Like he's seen too much. He's done too much with you, with his daddy, with you and his daddy together. He's not with this no more. And he gives her a burner phone and tells her to stay by it. Trust him. He's going to figure this all out for them. It was still a good scene, you know, and I think, um, um, Naturi Houghton, uh, Naughton did a good job in this scene. So likewise, Monet goes to see, to see, uh, Lorenzo. I was like, okay, I thought we had to get like on the books and I make appointment, but okay. She goes to see him and they not behind bars. Now they're in, um, what do you call it? When they, when they get communal visits, is it conjugal conjugal visits they're in conjugal and they're talking about the whole situation she she's telling him that you know people are out to get her well apparently he did not sanction the fact that she killed rico and she felt like it had to be done because he shot drew and he felt like who's going to be your connect he could have been your alliance out there against other other um drug dealers but you, now you've killed him against my wishes and she was like well just if i could just find ramirez ramirez can make this all go away and he was like um you sure is looking for Mar ramirez real tough you sure it's all about business with you and ramirez and she was like don't worry about all that and he said, no, you need to get Kane back because Kane is our muscle. Kane is our alliance. But Kane himself is just an army of one. He's still not a team of people. Like, you're, you're a drug kingpin and your answer to your, your wife while you're in jail, um, your answer to them going to war is to get your son that's all you got. You got more dudes in j jail fighting for you than you got fighting for your family on the outside. Is it me? I mean, 
<clears throat> it's odd. It's definitely odd. Okay, so um, he sends her on her way to get Kane back in line. And she sends him to go find Ramirez, right? This is a whole mess. So um, Monet goes to see Kane. And after learning that he killed Ramirez, she finally admits that maybe how he turned out is her fault. At the same time, she has pulled a gun on him. She feels like, oh, I can't trust you. I definitely can't trust you now and ends up walking out on him in the situation. But you admitted that this is how you, how you raised him. You did not raise him to be kind. You raised him to be this pit bull. I mean, this, this bulldog, this, this beast. And you're trying to figure out why you don't have control over the beast. Like, it's ridiculous. At the same time that I feel bad for Cain, how he was reared and how he's being treated by his family. Um, I realized that the die has been cast, that ship is sailed, that once, you know, a, a, a dog, they say, has tasted blood, human blood, you have to put them down because they can't be trusted from that point on. You know, that's what they used to say back in the country. I think it's true for Cain, though. I don't know if that's true about dogs, but I think it's true for Cain. I think um, that ship is sailed with Cain. I don't know that there's any recovery for Cain just because of how his mind works. He's at a place where there's really no going back for him. This, this is who he has become and this is who he is, you know. I mean, they can write it however they want to write it, but <clears throat> some things um, can't be undone. And some circles can't be unbroken, right? So, um, yeah. So she walks out on Kane, and you know, Kane is no longer an option for her. Basically, we see where Tariq goes to see Tommy, and Tommy is at Cash, who was Keisha's son. Y'all know Keisha is old girl Tommy's um, ex girlfriend, and. Tasha's ex best friend and y'all know Tasha ended up killing to um Keisha because she thought she was gonna testify against Tariq and uh so Tommy's at Cash Keisha's son's house and and he's an older boy now and um he's gone by to see him I don't know how Tariq noted that Tommy was there but he does. And at the same time that he's texting Jabari to meet him and to get that money, um, he's leaned up against Tommy's car and then we get to see Tommy. And I just had those same <sighs> season one, season two of power butterflies. And at the same time they was playing this song, it's supposed to be, it's it's a it's a 50 cent song but it's got kind of like a reggae beat to it and a lot of y'all don't know this but 50 cent used to be the shiznit back in 90s and the early 2000s like it was no songs that he put out that couldn't be a ringtone like 50 cent used to drop some bops like the moment you heard it you was just like ah. like everybody had it's your birthday and magic stick and all of these things um whatever this song is i can't remember it um uh, as a ringtone like 50 cent was everywhere he wasn't the troll that we know him to be now so all of that is like this nostalgia moment that Tommy, you know, walks out and and he sees, you know, we get to hear that Tommy drawl and he sees Tariq and basically, you know, he tells Tariq that your dad, I promised your dad I wouldn't kill you, but he, I didn't promise him I wouldn't kick your butt and you better get off my car. And Tariq 
um, has that assurance. So he's not afraid of Tommy like Tasha is. Like Tasha is seriously worried about the Tommy situation. And basically Tommy, he reminds Tommy of all the reasons why he wants to why Tommy wants to kill his mom to kill Tasha like he would think he wouldn't bring these things up especially if you're trying to save your mama's life but he puts them all on the table and and it was some stuff that I think Tommy had forgotten he was like oh yeah that's reason number 342 why I want to kill your mama and he was like I'm gonna hunt her down to the day I die and Tariq was like but wait a minute I got a plan and Tommy was like okay Spit your plan. You know, you got two minutes to tell me what the plan is. I was like, y'all, okay. So we don't really know what the plan is, but we do see sex with some broad, you know, he's um, having, uh, you know, sex with. It's, it's a weird scene. Like, I think we could have did away with that whole Tasha coming out of jail scene. I think we could have did away with her going over to try Bob to buy Monet off. I think we could have did away with this scene in lieu of some actual writing, some actual content, some actual depth uh, um, in the whole episode. But it is what it is. Basically, this scene was put together for what? So that we can hear Sax get a call from Davis, I believe it was. Um telling him that Tommy put a, a hit out on a Tasha. <sighs> Sax gets this grand idea that he's gonna he's gonna trap Tommy. So we see um basically Tariq's plan come together that he he gave to Tommy. Tasha's running errands. She's got Sax in the back seat, and both Tommy and the feds are following her. Tommy's following her. The feds are following Tommy. It's all just very orchestrated. Now, before Sax leaves this this chick he's he's grooming, he says to her, I've got 24 hours to get my job back. So all of this took place in a matter of hours where he's got the feds on deck. They've got Tommy followed and up and Tasha on board and she's had a whole day to run her errands back and forth and um supposedly she pulls off Tommy pulls up behind her she goes to the right and at the stop sign when Tommy pulls up they're gonna pull him over and arrest him Tommy takes off there's this high speed chase there's some sort of construction in the road and he avoids the construction and runs into something and the car blows up and Sax gets out and he's like, Oh, I'm God, I've got to save him. He's my witness. And the police are like, no, are you crazy? It's too dangerous. You can't go in there. And Sax is like, I've got to save him. And he's like, no. And go, <laughs> Tommy and his back molars are blown to smithereens quote fingers right now nighttime and Tariq has met with Jabari in a dark park and Jabari's got the money and his briefcase and he um gives Tariq the money and Tariq turns the leave and it's like fine and Jabari's like wait a minute I gotta know who killed the the GTG guy at the pool and Tariq was like, I don't know. He was like, well, come on, man. You got to tell me something. You got to give me something. I cleaned all my accounts out to give you this money. And you got to tell me something. And Tariq was like, look. And as soon as he does, Cain pops out from behind a tree. I was like, okay. First of all, Tariq, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to learn when you're being tailed like you're getting tailed a lot that's something you want to learn asap okay but um immediately kane shoots jabari and jabari's like oh and he's down on the ground and he's just like oh i'm quietly quietly making 
weak noises from the ground. And Cain is like, I knew you were a snitch. I knew you were double crossing this family. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And Tyreek's like, come on. I was like, Tyreek, you, you've talked people down like this. Cain is, Cain is this killer. He's, he's had nothing but a bee in his bonnet about Tariq. In this moment, you don't kill Tariq. You listen, you hear Tariq out. And Tariq basically sets a plan for Cain. Tells him to think. You've already been isolated. You've already killed Ramirez. Cain is listening to all of this. Cain is listening to reason, right? It's weird, but he's listening. Yeah, and if you do this, you really will never get back in with your family. You will never be included again. Like killing me is like killing their profits and and it's going to be the worst for you. And Kane's like, okay, well, what's your idea? And he is like, give me the gun. He was like, yeah, right. I'm going to give you this gun. That's Ramirez's gun, isn't it? And Kane's like, yeah. And he's like, yeah. So give me Ramirez's gun. I'm going to finish this guy off. What I need you to do is go somewhere where a whole bunch of people can see you. And that's going to be your alibi. And Kane's like, okay, okay. I like where this is going. And so he disappeared. Tariq goes into this long Homer and the Odyssey diatribe with Jabari. Jabari naively thinks he can still reason with Tariq. And come on, come on. I'm going to forget all about this. But you got to get me to the hospital. I've lost a lot of blood. Obviously, no one cares about you. When you got shot, no one was like, oh... Jabari, Mr. Professor, are you okay? No one cares about you, sir. Since he knows he's going to do this, he's going to kill Jabari. He just tells him, I killed my dad and I killed my best friend, meaning Kanan. And um, it's going to be no problem killing you because this is kind of what my family does. It, you know, it's fraught with violence and lies and deceit. And it always comes down to um, my family with a gun or my family and the gun or something like that. It's so telenovela. And then he shoots Dabari two times and kills him. So um, Kane, who was supposed to disappear, doesn't disappear. He's actually standing behind the tree and he hears all of this. And um, he walks off like, yeah, gotcha, right? Like I hear everything that you said. And Davis go to see Stax. Stax is packing up his office. And basically Davis offers Stax a job. I think 2-Bit is the real life boyfriend of Courtney Kemp. But I mean, we may all be wrong about that. Maybe it's the Stax guy because I don't see why we're keeping Stax around like Anyway, he's going to be in bed with Davis, which means Davis is officially our enemy now. It's obvious that he really was trying to set Tariq up. He wasn't just setting stacks up. So, so <clears throat> Davis is an ain't-ish character, basically. So then we see where um, Tariq basically talks with Tommy on the phone and uh, Tommy lies to him about, you know, leaving. Like, I'm on the freeway now, headed out of town. And you took care of all of this. And thank you for the great plan and yada, yada. And Tariq is like, yeah. At the same time, Tariq is calling someone because he's got yet another plan that he's putting in motion. Like, I'm like, oh, he's got three or four plans in one episode. That's fine. And we see where Tosh is down at the graveside and she's saying goodbye to her long lost daughter and what's left of James St. Patrick when um, Tariq and Tommy shows up because Tommy is tailing Tariq. <laughs> Everybody just tail Tariq and you'll know what's going on, right? And uh, basically Tariq is there to say goodbye because Unbeknownst to Tasha, he's called the feds to say 
that there's another threat on her life. And so just on that alone, they are going to take Tasha into Whitsec. Now she's going into Whitsec by herself because she was planning on running away with Tariq, which is why she was saying goodbye to Raina at the grave site. Cause she was like, I'm not going to be able to see you for a while, but she wasn't going to take Yaz. Her daughter, she was just going to, it was just going to be her and Tariq because she feels like Yaz is in a better place. I was like, girl, you already done left your daughter to be in jail. You know, left your daughter to run drugs. Like, so you finna leave this child for life with your mama? Come on. It's redundant. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I mean, I don't know if it's because somebody told her that that Yaz is not going to be able to keep her mouth closed in Witsec. I think that was Stax that told Tasha that. It still ain't ish, in my opinion. So, um, she's like, no, 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 don't do this. Don't do this, Tariq. And Tariq was like, no, no, this is for your own good. I'll be fine. I can take care of me. Don't worry about me. You do you, mama, and just focus on getting out of this life and she's like please 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 and they take her away and when they take her away she's like no Tariq I don't want to go without you no not yes not her mama none of that now just before this happened Tommy was lining uh Tasha up in his sights to kill her okay and so when he sees what Tariq has done he comes and yokes Tariq up <laughs> I was gonna kill your mom. I'm never gonna stop looking for her. You've only, you know, prolonged the inevitable. And and someone pulls a gun on Tommy. Someone's behind him with a gun. And Tommy's like, who, who in the heck, who's got the wolves to pull a gun on Tommy, Tommy two fingers? And he turns around and it's Monet. I was like, ugh. Mary J. Blige with this thug attitude, this this wig. It was a pretty color, but it was looking real Ronald McDonald on her head. And basically, she's got a gun on Tommy. She takes his gun. Tommy's like Tariq. He tells Monet, you better watch out for Tariq. Watch this one. He can't be trusted. And, um, he tells, um, Tariq that he's a lot like his dad. He's turning out to be just like his dad. And like I said, in this telenovela moment, uh, Tariq tells Tommy, well, maybe one day I truly can take on the name of Ghost. I was like, what? That was the whole reason you killed him? Like, I don't know. And Tommy walks off. And tells Tariq he's never going to see him again. I was just like, what is happening here? And Diana pulls up with Drew in the car. And uh, she tells Tariq, come on, let's go. The family's here. And that is the um, season one finale for Power Book 2 Ghost. Like I said, it was like a triathlon, you guys. It was so confusing. It was so hurried and rushed. And it was put together with toothpaste and Rice Krispie treats, um, you know, and, and paper clips and paper mache and toilet paper. Like it was the flimsiest storyline set up ever and the thing about it is it was so rushed um from what i understand book three and four are being filmed at the same time so we can expect the same kind of rushed hurried toilet paper thin rice crispy treat type of 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 storylines for though both of those I, You guys tell me what you think of this episode. You guys tell me what you think of this season. I I found this season entertaining, but I don't know. I just, it really requires you to just turn your brain off. Like just turn your brain off. Forget about timelines and plots and 
the fact that um, if you're going to go in WITSEC, if you've got a plan to go into WITSEC, they will never release you into the public um, from court. You're going to go immediately into sequestering. Like you have to forget all of these things and just go with it as is. But um, yeah, overall, it was an entertaining season. It kept me busy during COVID, you know, this little short period of time. So I appreciated that. But I mean, the writing really is not great here, you guys. Y'all tell me what you think. Put it down below. And until next time, honeybees, mwah, mwah, mwah. I holla.